what I want to talk about today, specifically with nonprofits and causes, mm -hmm. is when we can harness the power and the energy of those influencers that have a passion for whatever our passion is, when we can harness that, if we can identify them and engage them, the power that they can bring. Um, so really quick, just a, an introduction. If you want uh, my contact info, uh, similar to Adam, just text DYJO, D-Y-E-J-O, to 50500. Um, my handle's at DYJO, so find me on any of these social platforms. So I want to give you a little bit uh, background on influence marketing and influencer marketing. And this is my first foray into the power of influencer marketing because I'm a social media strategist here at Boncom, but uh, with the algorithm changes, you know, that John talked about and some of the other things that Barrett talked about, you know, th there are, uh, unless you bring a lot more money to the table, your content won't be seen. So this was in 2014. Again, this was with a religious organization. It was an Easter campaign that we were doing. And we had a YouTube channel, The Shaytards, uh, pick up on what we did, an official piece of content that we did for this religion. At this time, they said, hey, you know, within their vlog, if you, if you understand the format, basically it's a very relaxed format. It's basically a daily post that they do, and they'll just basically take you throughout their day or, or certain activities that they do. Uh, in this post, Shay, the dad, said, hey, we found this video that we thought was very inspirational. It represents what we believe and we would love to share it with you. So in this daily vlog, or vlog, excuse me, we started seeing a lot of traffic, referral traffic from this vlogger, the Shaytards, to our site. We saw some very funny Responses, Jesus sent me here, so did the Shaytards. Uh, some other people wrote, Shaytards brought me here, I love Shay and his family. I'm here because of Shay Carl. Everyone can believe what they want, I respect all religions. At the end of the day, we are all human beings trying to survive this harsh world. But I just want to say thanks, Shay Carl, for linking this video to us and educating us. So again, the power of a brand ambassador. Somebody who has a large following online and that synergizes with a cause, this can create some, some huge ripple effects for audiences. And so, again, as we're talking about whatever, whatever it is, whether it's a cause, whether it's a higher, uh, an education, uh, uh, an institution of, of higher education, if we align with the right people that have the right passions, we can make a, a huge difference here. So I want to share with you, at least this is the way I envision it. And some people get this graphic and others don't, so I apologize. I'm going to try to do my best to explain how I see it. We all have a message or an activation that we want to get across, right? Marketing 101, you want to either uh, affect behavior or get people to do something in some way, or you want them to be aware of something, right? So I call that institutional content that we put out, whatever that is, if it's from an institution of higher education, they will create content if it's from a cause they create content, whatever that is, they're trying to reach that goal, whatever that message or that activation is. Well, where influencers comes in for me, I'm not saying we need to do away, nor should we do away with institutional content. I consider the influencer content, though I call it buttressing content, okay? It creates something that, is, that, that can't be replicated from an institutional perspective. And the reason why that is good is we talked about humanizing things today. Um, again, if it comes from uh, an official entity, people know there's an agenda behind that. You know, give us money or believe the way we believe or do something else. But if you can see the benefits, if that can be packaged, the benefits of whatever it is you're trying to get people to do or the message you're trying to get across, if they can package it in a way for their audience, in a way that, again, leads up to that message or activation, that just helps everyone. So again, it doesn't replace institutional content. I call it, it buttresses that. And this is the key for me. It can turn a marketive, marketing initiative into a movement. That is the main goal, at least for me, when I get involved with influencers, is how do we turn an initiative into a movement? Uh, we need to create a lot of UGC, user-generated content, to, to make it feel that way. But again, the movement is the key. 
So let's talk a little bit about the types of influencers. And Papa P, David Felitas mentioned this a little earlier. Um, you know, I, I basically break down influencers into three large categories. And you could get even more granular if you so desired. But I consider the top tier those with a large reach of right around a million or more. Okay, people who subscribe to them maybe on YouTube or follow them on Facebook or fan them on certain platforms, etc. These are people that are extremely well known. It's a it's a blast, so to speak, a media play when you work with them, and when you work with them, you better anticipate spending a lot of money. Okay, so there is a job to be done here in the top tier, and these these people are good. Some of our budgets might be able to afford those, and some may not. I call the second group the power middle. You know, these, these people have a moderate reach. Again, it's still very large, 100,000 plus. I consider them the up and comers, okay? Stay with these people, especially if you have a cause or a passion that they align with, because eventually they may be at the top tier and you want to work with them. Again, uh, you're looking at some dollars here, but not obviously as much as the top tier. And then the most interesting piece for me, at least right now, that I deal with are the micro-influencers. These are people that usually have under 10,000 followers. But the key here, guys, is the engagement. You need the high engagement. Adam mentioned this a little earlier, right? If they're not using your product, if they don't believe in your cause, if there's not some alignment in some way, it just doesn't work. It doesn't feel like it's authentic, right? You need people to be transparent, authentic, and these guys are very interesting to me. You can find so many of these individuals out there when you talk about email lists. These are who you're talking to, guys. These are your, your people that talk to people in person and online, and you want to get them to, your, to, your, to uh, um, support your message or your activation. And again, when you look at budgeting, you can afford a lot of these guys versus somebody on the mid-tier or the high-tier, right? So these guys are a little bit harder to target sometimes. In some ways, you can use your email list in other, other ways, and I'll, I'll talk about some of those other practical ways toward the end of my presentation. But uh, again, you have the, the, the top tier, the mid tier, and then the micro influencers. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Boncom right now. We have aggregated 800 plus influencers that we work with um, on an annual basis, and it's, it's great to work with them with over 190 million in total reach. Okay, does that mean we activate everyone for every initiative or every movement we try to create? Absolutely not. But you try to target those individuals based on what that message or that activation is. I'm just gonna go through a few case studies so you can see maybe how all of this can come together. And I'm not saying it's perfect, because it definitely hasn't been, but we've seen some, some good results, and I'd like to share those with you. The first one is with a, a clean water organization out of Denver, Colorado, Healing Waters. We were able to activate what's inside. Uh, they're represented here today. Uh, YouTube celebrities here. We also have cute girls hairstyles here on the end. Uh, huge Instagrammer, Corinne, here. And then Ashley Lemieux is a writer and speaker from Nashville that does a lot for disenfranchised children. So all of these individuals, um, for lack of a better term, had, well, they, they had a stake in what we were doing. They all felt very passionately about clean water and going down to the Dominican Republic where we did do this. So we got all of these guys together. We took a trip down to the Dominican Republic. We put in a clean water um, installation down in a village. And then we asked them to come back and create content. All of this, guys, was organic. None of this was paid. And I want to show you some of the results. So we gave them an experience. That's something else that I feel is important with influencers. I'll mention this toward the end as well, is you have to give them an experience. Because they will create the content, but you have to give them the experience that creates the, the, the valuable content for their channel. So again, we took them on a, on a week retreat, but th these were the results. And again, these people had large followings. So consider that, but over 2.3 million pieces of, in, or pieces of engagement happened during the 23-day campaign that we did on this. So that could be a like, a comment, a share, any of those types of things. We raised over $116,000 for Healing Waters. 
which resulted in seven new villages getting clean water as well, which was good. Um, this was remarkable to me, and this happened at the onset of the campaign, and you probably see this when campaigns start. You see a spike, and then it kind of dovetails off, and then if you put some emphasis at the end, it comes back. We saw $75,000 donated to Healing Waters in a single day because of these four individuals. So again, very, very, very huge results. The second case study we did in conjunction with YouTube, this was YouTube Space New York, where we did this. And again, this was for a uh, cause-based um, nonprofit that we associate with. This was, I, I would call it a, a live stream of a concert. And we aggregated multiple influencers that are well known, over 25 million reach in this picture alone. Um, and we brought them together for a live stream concert based on service. The hashtag, and we should mention this too, was like the world, U utilizing a hashtag strategy with these is extremely important. So consider that as you as you start to work with influence. But what we did basically is these are people again that are nationally known. The piano guys, you may be familiar with them, but we brought in a small audience uh, in person and we had a huge audience online, but they would just watch these individuals uh, play and then we talked about service that was happening with them and with others, et cetera, et cetera. So, it was, it was extremely well produced and very well done. Um, Ellen picked up on it, Ellen DeGeneres. She loves, I don't know if you guys know this, Claire Ryan, she's been on three or four times, so anything Claire Ryan, Ellen will pick up on. But that helped lift it for us. Ashton Kutcher's website, A Plus, picked up on it. Again, Claire was the hero here. But again, all of these additional earned media opportunities, Michelle Moore, that come from this, right? When you can utilize influencers, the traditional media picks up on it, which actually buoys it even higher. So with a mere eight influencers activated, again, over 25 million in reach, over three and a half million video views resulted. And again, were we trying to activate people to do something? We were, service. But we were also trying to build awareness of the Light the World campaign that would bring the service to bear. So here at the end, I just want to talk about a few best practices. I mentioned this before, but you need to make it experiential. It's experiential marketing at its core. So give the influencers an experience they won't forget, and the content naturally flows from that. You don't have to, um, and I think Adam mentioned this before, don't be prescriptive on what they do. Maybe you want to say, I need this amount of content from you, but don't tell them how to talk to their audience, right? Tell them the main messaging points just like you would do in PR. And from there, let them create that for their audience because that is where they are the true experts, right? So again, give them an experience. This is something we did um, in Utah. There's something known as Trek. We took a lot of influencers up and, and we did a mile mini Trek with a lot of these folks. Um, it was to promote a film, actually. So we had a Chuck Wagon dinner. We did uh, axe throwing games, and no one was killed, luckily. <laughs> we just did a lot of time period um, uh, type activities. You'll notice that a lot of these people dressed up, and we were able to get people there to um, experience something and create content naturally from that. So let's talk about some of the services just really quickly that you could have them do for you. And by no means is this an exhaustive list, but I think these are some of the best things that could be done. Um, obviously, social media posts on whatever platforms they're strong on, blog posts if they have blog and own media like that. Video is huge. Podcasting, obviously live, going live on Instagram and Facebook book is extremely popular and the algorithms love that. If they vlog, get them to do those. Instagram stories or Facebook stories. As I mentioned before, events. Get them at events and, and content naturally flows. And then we have some other things as well. Paid ads, some people will allow you to um, be on their property and actually advertise directly with them. And that's, that's usually very, very good if you can find the right niche for that. So let's talk about how do you source? Because again, I wanna leave you with something practical here. How do you find the influencers? You know, I'm, I'm talking about mul multiple people that we have created relationships with, but how do we find them? A lot of them, as Adam mentioned earlier, we found through databases and just tracking people, right? 
just literally going online and seeing who talks about certain topics. But there are some systems that you can utilize and you can, that are browser based that you can get and just uh, ask, you know, I'm looking for somebody in niche, this niche and they'll actually help show you how many followers they have and then you can start building those relationships with them. The first one is Tracker, T-R-A-A-C-K-R. So again, you just put in your parameters and go from there, and, and you can identify who those influencers are. Analytica is another one, O-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-A. BuzzSumo, BuzzStream, GroupPi also works very well. And many of these have great CMS platforms built in so you can actually communicate with the influencer through their platform. Sprout Social, I think, is the last one I put up here. I, again, I think there are some good things about certain platforms and some not so good things, and some are better in certain areas, but these are some places at least where you can. So again, the, the thing I would leave you with is finding those people with bullhorns that can get behind your cause or get behind whatever effort you're trying to, to put forth, I think is huge. Because again, the biggest thing for me, as I said before, people know if you're coming from an institution that you have some sort of an agenda, right? You want them to do something. And that's great, and you should, right? That's why you have a job. But finding those people who align with you that have those natural penchants for wanting to do what you do, that just makes it feel, again, like I said, from it goes from an initiative to a movement, and that's where I think the true synergy occurs, and it really goes viral in that nature.